Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, okay, let's start here. Did a quick. Finally, we cut something the fucking did a queen. It took three episodes. I can't argue my point here though because I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Holler to Med, the podcast where I didn't think of anything else to come up after this. <laughs> Holler to Med? Yeah. Was, I hope yeah, I pronounced that right. Yeah, yeah. Kinda. Kinda? The, I could, yeah, I could understand what you meant. The, that was the best I fucking could. <laughs> <laughs> For people who uh, don't know, that's... Uh, Swedish for disagree, the, the the name of the podcast. And I chose Swedish not because of the fact that, you know, one of the hosts is Swedish. Uh, we're talking about a Swedish album about Swedish wars. A lot Yay. darker than I, than I thought. I didn't think this through. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the last episode, we recommended to each other, uh, Jonas recommended uh, the album Careless Rex from the Swedish power metal band. Yes. Uh, the oh. Swedish power, power metal band Sabaton. And I recommended something I very much regret oh, recommending. Oh, fucking bullshit. I very much regret <laughs> recommending it. Not even just because I know you are, you're angry about it. I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and give a little bit of uh, spoilers. We're not gonna go directly into the wall, um, but I'll give a little bit of spoilers. That was so fucking boring to watch. <laughs> I was so yeah, it's... bored. <laughs> but yeah, I have something to say about that as well. So, <laughs> but uh, the... <laughs> you know the funny thing is, is I have planned. I have planned for the video uh, that <laughs> I'm just going to title it The Wall, but then in the thumbnail, I'm going to use Nostalgia Critic's The Wall. I'm not oh. going to mention that it's Nostalgia <laughs> Critic in the title. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Nostalgia Critic's review of uh, slash parody of The Wall by Pink Floyd. Uh, but first, we're going to get the, the probably shorter section out of the way. The Sabaton album. Uh, I don't know jack shit about this. Care to explain? <laughs> the Shepard album did album is about the rise and the fall of the great Swedish Empire when we had like did it go through uh, our history through many kings. The we the Sweden what. A lot military force, and uh, like we have a lot more power than and uh, now, and a lot of the history around that. And Chapadon is a band. If you don't know Chapadon that well, there are a band that footed a lot on war history around. Yeah. Or everything, but on this album, they have made a double album in a way. That one of the album is Swedish, the other album in English is kind of the same album. And we are talking about the Swedish one, if I know yeah. correctly. I I I chose to listen to the Swedish version just for the sake of you know the fact that that's basically the original. See, I chose Adelie. to watch the. Su I chose to listen to the sub, not the dub. <laughs> Actually, the English version came first, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I just took it as a Swedish version as the original because they're a Swedish band. But like, I'm I'm familiar. I'm somewhat familiar with that whole style of translating your own albums because you know I, I've been listening to Tattoo ever since I was a fucking kid, and. Uh, my collection of tattoo songs that I like change between whether or not it's the original Russian version or the English version, just depending on which one I first heard. Um, I feel like in the album, even though I don't know if you had bought the version, probably not, but nah, I feel like both. some songs I prefer the English version, some songs I prefer the Swedish version. But I kind of like that 
they did like the only album that they have done anything like that. All the other albums in like English. And I feel it really fit in because did each sweet hit to me that they have sweet song in it. Yeah, it's fair. Also, I, I, I do remember you saying about how the English version like made songs worse. Like there's that, I don't remember what the name of the song was, but I remember you sending me the translated lyrics and it's just so not good compared to the original. Yeah, um, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's not good, but... Like, the writing was a lot weaker. And lifted of Greek, it's, um, uh, a lifted in Greek, it's like a song that is really different in the English version than the Swedish. The English version, it's named uh, A Lifetime of War, and, like, what... How they are differ is that the indie version it talk about the war in like general and how bad that war watch with many ca- on Cassidy and so on and that's fine but I can like the sweeted version better because it's more about the military soldier himself that he live in the country to fight for the country and. No, that he might die while uh, fighting for his homeland. Yeah, I, I, I just now realized that that's actually uh, probably my favorite song on the album. It's, it's at least one of them. It's at least one of them because I thought favorite. it was really. And I remember I, I'll get into it when we go track by track. But um, yeah, which I guess we might as well do. Um, starting with the first one, uh, d- d- listeners, uh, d- prepare to hear me butcher the fucking Swedish language constantly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's the first track. I can't even read my own damn handwriting. <laughs> it's not even the same. Ex fucking excuse me. I'm looking at the Wikipedia track list and oh wait no that's 29 seconds long. No wonder it wasn't included. Okay, so I'm just now realizing I never heard the song. Uh, I'm gonna try to they, pronounce this. Dominium. Like, Dominion Maric Baltic. I think it. Yeah. I, I think it Latin or something. That like the a more extended intro to the second song. So, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. it's 30 seconds, and my notes start at. Uh, Ah, oh, fucking hell. Uh, Lejeune... Lejeune at Fran Norden? Leonet von Norden. Leor... Okay, Leo... Yeah. Oh, yeah, your J's are, are wise. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your name is literally pronounced Jonas in Swedish, but I always fucking call you Jonas. <laughs> I call you the American version. Okay, so Leon... Leonet Fran Norden. I feel... Like I'm saying that wrong. Um, I what I, your fault? I wrote. Um, I like the co- or no, no, okay. I wrote. I like the choirs build up and guitar riff. Um, there's a ding right before the I believe the verse like, like right before the verse vocals come in. You can hear like a silent like chime or like a ding. I think it's like a triangle or something or a ride symbol. And it always reminds me of the intro to Natural Born Kill... Or, not that it always, but it immediately reminded me of the intro to Natural Born Killer by Event Sevenfold. Where that intro is really funny because it's all, like, heavy thrash influence. So it's, like, incredibly fast. And then it breaks down to where you hear a bunch of, like really fast playing and I'm pretty sure Mike growling and then everything just goes quiet and you just hear a slight ding and then everything comes in for the chorus. <laughs> I need to hurt that song. <laughs> it's it's pr- it's pretty funny. Um and then I wrote Oh no wait, that's the end of my notes. It's <laughs> the end of the notes on the song. I wrote my I've told you this off camera before we started recording my notes are literally just like one or two things down and then i just stopped writing about the song or just song ended up being over 
That's fair. Like sometimes you don't have a lot to say. Like, and before before we're going into more on this review, let me tell you that I'm not a music reviewer. I don't know <laughs> yet shit about music theory or anything like that. Is, but this episode's just gonna show like why my videos need to be scripted. Cause you can go to watch you can go and watch like my fear review and how in depth I get into everything. And then here it's just like I like guitar lol. <laughs> like I just like Like I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I know we were going to do this track by track, and we will. I'm going to skip all the way to the last track, because it does kind of... It, it, it does kind of show, like... One of the notes that I have kind of shows one of my feelings or points about the album. And I wrote one thing about the intro, and then just wrote, Oh, it's over. And I feel like that was pretty much every song where it just started... And then next thing I knew, it was over. And that's not a bad thing, because you do have songs in here that are, like, f close to six minutes long. Like, uh, uh, uh shit. Uh, and, and livid. Um, and lives did it Krieg? And lives did it Krieg. Okay, Krieg. Makes sense. Uh, that one is, like, close to six minutes long. There's, uh, Caroline's Bon? Ah, oh, fuck, that has a... Caroline and Bon. Bon, okay. And that's, like, over six minutes long. But they don't feel like six minutes. Like, they go by pretty fast. And I, 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 I do give the album that. Like, a third... It was, like, 13 tracks, I believe, or at least... Well, Wikipedia is saying 11, but it was, like, a 13 track... The playlist that you sent me was 13 videos, but... Yeah, but it's 12... Uh... Tracks, but also that includes a bonus track that shouldn't be. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for like like it's. I mean, it is only really forty five minutes, so that's not terrible. But yeah, like I I I give the album props. Like, you know, for someone who's not really the biggest fan of longer songs, and I have like a very. Like, if you're going to make a song that's long, like, there are people that done it right. Metallica's back in their prime. Definitely not now. Uh, fucking, uh, I, uh, let's see, Stan, Rap God, and Bad Guy are all, like, six, seven minutes long. Under Pressure is, like, nine minutes long. Uh, the Logic song, not the Queen song. <laughs> but <laughs> there, there's... But with those songs, like, things change, and so it's entertaining all the way through. And, of course, you and I have history with, you know, like, the latest, uh, the last, um, uh, what the fuck was it? The, uh, Iron Maiden album, where both of us just got really fucking bored. Yes. It's like, at least with this, at least with this, uh, band, and, yeah, a lot of the songs are more four minutes, but when it does reach into the six minutes, it's like, I wasn't ever really bored. So I'll give a prop yeah. for that. It didn't. It wasn't boring. <laughs> I think they were unionized in uh, the time really well uh, and made it so it doesn't feel like track, track out or anything. It feel like every song feel like the perfect length to that song, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, going back to track by track, I basically gave everything I can about the first track. I Wait, thought it was. I... Thought it was good. <laughs> the first track, Leonard Newton. What I've really liked about this song is they showcase like the power of King Kutarvuch Aldovuch or King Adolf the Great with what his name of her he died. Because he he like a pioneer of modern warfare and statesmanship when they come to like the Protestant Swedish Empire. Like, he had a big wall there, and he was, like, a great military and great king in that sense. He showed how much power I uh, have, and I feel like this threat, both with the Latin, uh, they come in the courage and everything, he showed great a lot of power. In my opinion, he had, like, that power feel to it. 
I think we need a great opener and probably one of my favorite threats already, honestly. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I like the, the, the core, the, I don't know why I want to fucking say chorus. I, I've, even when I've been awake for, let's say, almost two hours, I still end up feeling like I've only been awake for five minutes, like the last two episodes. <laughs> but, uh, I like, I like the choirs. I did think it, it was a very badass sounding track. I think a lot of the album does I, I, I do like the production of the album, how everything sounds very operatic and kind of godly, but also, you know, war-like. It does de it does definitely, at least musically and production, sound like a album about war. Um, it does. I guess moving on to the next one, uh, Gautmint Unz? Yeah. But, yeah. You nice. got it pretty good. <laughs> I... This is this is uh, me preparing for when I eventually review uh, the Millennium Trilogy. <laughs> just figuring out <laughs> Swedish. Uh, this is one where I lit This is another one where I just have one note, which is just I like the opening guitar riff. I, I had one of my favorite guitar riff from the I, album. <laughs> oh my fucking god! My dad. My dad's outside of my room playing with the fucking lightsaber, and I'm pretty sure it's the lightsaber that I just bought yesterday to th throw in the water. The bootleg space sword. <laughs> I just hear it outside my room. <laughs> <laughs> Did podcast episode. This is it. Third episode. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about a Swedish album. Anyway, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say uh, in my notes, I did put a star next to tracks that I would like to go back and hear again. I say that. This is not one of them, but I, I just mm. wanted to clarify that uh, because, like, the next track is one of those. Um, but, mm. yeah, when it comes to the second track, I, I, I actually cannot remember anything <laughs> other than liking the guitar riff. <laughs> yeah, like, did, did you know about the second King Kut of the second Adolf? And like when he did on the Catholic lead and the uh, Habit Imperial Army on September 17 uh, in the year 331 in an open field near the village of Bredenfield. And yet I copied that from uh, the fucking <laughs> Sabaton page. <laughs> Shoot me. <laughs> 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 but yet. What I really like about it, it got me doing shit like, I really like the covert as well, and like I like with alone where a lot of did covert it, but I also know that maybe you can't, but it's sweet, it. <laughs> maybe you can eat in little version, but I found the covert pretty, yeah, pretty cashy in a way, and got me doing is something I really remember it, and I found it good that I remember those word because... That is like the war cry, the the we did went to it, which I think did pretty good. Yeah, you you mentioned about the, uh, or what it sounded like you had said something about the being hard to sing along to, and that reminded me. I think this might be the song where I saw a comment of saying of, of someone saying like, "This is the hardest fucking song to sing along to in Swedish." <laughs> I do have a a, a, a question, though, because I, I remember when I first got into Refused, who's a, like a classic, iconic, uh, I don't, I guess iconic, um, Swedish punk band, um, and I remember talking to you about, I, I made like a joke about how uh, you didn't like them because they speak English despite being a Swedish band, and then you said that you don't like Swedish the, the Swedish language and music? Oh, yet, oh, yet, yet. I must say I did, but normally I don't like when they are singing Swedish in sound. It very few songs in my language that I did think sound good. Caramel dancing. <laughs> I don't even Palamel know if that's Swedish. <laughs> Palamel dancing. <laughs> but, but, like I said, did album, the Swedish did, I did sound good and... 
I like to sing alone with this lyrics and for a lot of time I found sweet it sounding really bad but for some reason they actually made it sound pretty good and it, it fits in yeah. with overall the theme of the story. Even though, as I said, like, on this song, I actually prefer the English version more, <laughs> but yeah. it's what it is. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, the, the lead singer, he's, I will say his voice does sound really good, and the, the yes. I kind of felt like the, another reason why I kind of was more gravitated towards the Swedish version than the English version is because the Swedish version just in general sounds more powerful and warlike than I could imagine the English version sounding. Like, I'm sure the English version sounds fine, but there's just something about the Swedish version that just sounded like, this just fits. This feels perfect. This feels like this This is how it should be. I I heard something uh, about, I don't remember how I got the information, but I think like, I think that, they didn't do as many of recording to this version as they did on the inlet version because he got the emotion and everything right on, <laughs> like in the first cry, cry while in the inlet version he he needed to do multiple takes to get there. <laughs> also, Chaperon, the listener, Joachim, he had like that commander vote even on the inlet version that he actually kind of sound like a war commander, <laughs> which really, really fit in uh, to the style of music they were doing. Yeah. Um, so the next track, uh, and... Yeah, oh, fucking hell. And instead, it... <laughs> I'm like barely trying at this point. <laughs> In this, um, shit, enough for daughter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that one, I that one does have a star, and probably has the most notes that I have. Um, a one. I wrote. Well, I did write. The guitarists have been top notch throughout this whole album so far. Uh, oh yeah, the guitars kicking in right before the chorus. Like, it. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I've been on a Radiohead binge, but it just reminds me of Creep slash My <laughs> Iron... It reminds me of Creep <laughs> slash My Iron Lung for only the reason because of just how it's... There's no guitars during the verse, and then you hear a guitar start to play and then cut off, and then the chorus comes in. And that just kind of reminded me of Creep. But then also reminds me of that part in My Iron Lung where he says this and then the guitar plays and he says, is our new sound? Which I, I fucking love My Iron Lung. Anyways, before this turns into a Radiohead review. Um... Never expect that there's some fucking com comparison <laughs> between Shepardon and Way to It. <laughs> I'm not comparing them, I'm just saying it makes me think of this. It just makes me think of this the one Radiohead song I, I do not like. Um, <laughs> um, let's see, uh, oh, the lyrics were constantly giving me chills every time I was reading the, the English translation, and I, I only wrote one lyric off this entire album, and it's from the song, and it was, uh, I didn't write the Swedish version, I wrote the English translation yeah. of, uh, out there where death awaits, not heroism. Hmm. And I was like, fuck, he's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. I I really liked how this showed, like, the pretty bad side of war. Yeah. <laughs> like, wait, I think we had to leave. I think we jump over the one. Fuck. We jump over and lift it or treat. That's my fault. Wait, what? Huh? <laughs> Which channel are we talking about? Uh, a Lifetime at War. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we uh, jump over, but yeah. <laughs> okay. I fuck up. Okay, but... <laughs> Elliptid or Creed. Now when we're actually talking about that thread and not the other track they come in late. <laughs> because I fucking... Conf whatever. <laughs> This is my favorite thread because it actually showed how 
a man it how how he can could feel like in the shoulder protective when they're fighting for the home country. I also for some reason, even though Diddy Light connected to a uh, hit away long far away, he kinda I don't know why but I got the feeling what would I do in that situation? Would I be willing to fight for my country or if then if that he needed, would I do that? Like, I don't know, it made me ask those questions. And I don't know, I think it's just a powerful song that gives me shields. But also, it's a good song, and I always sing along to it. And funny thing, I saw Shepardon in a concert this year. <laughs> and uh, before the lead singer even got to sing the song, the whole audience already sang the whole third words. <laughs> so yeah, it's a powerful song, and uh, yeah, people love it, and I love it, and it's one of my favorite Sabaton songs, not only in this album, but in general. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, like I said, it's it, I, I have it written as currently my favorite so far, because it's just, it, it's a dark outlook, and kind of mm. more the, the truth of war, and mm. in a in a way, it, it's uh, I, I guess you could say it's like an anti-war track. It's and it, it it does remind me of you know, you know. Obviously, I'm American, so it reminds me of fucking Republicans and <laughs> conservatives that are all about how ah war is so great, military is so great. I'm gonna go risk my life, and it's like yeah, cool for you. I don't. <laughs> I feel like which is Shepard. With Shepard in general, I think that a lot of the songs each anti-war, but there's, they are like pay, paying tribute to the military, the people, the soldiers that they fight for the war, for what they're fighting for. Like, they are anti-war itself, but they can, like, I don't know if celebrate it, the right word, but they, they pay tribute to those that are each fighting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I'm. I. That's basically my my position of it. It's like good for the people who go out and fight. I couldn't fucking do it. I don't want to fucking do it. I ain't gonna risk my life or my time for a country I'm not proud of. But hey, you know, if you're proud of it, go, go, uh, go fight for it. That's cool. Um, but yeah, I I, I do really love that line of out there where death awaits, not heroism. Because I, I do feel so like war can be, you know, being in the military can be pretty glorified and it's it's pretty pretty fucking sad sometimes. The fact that like the fact that like the military here like, and I think it's a I know at least it's in uh, the UK as well, um, but like the the military will just constantly fucking harass you to try to join, and it's like. I don't want to get. <laughs> and uh, you know that is... now we are talking to another subject, but I think it's important that a lot of the military mental health and so on. Yeah. It end up pretty bad because you a lot of people can't recover from what their parents with each. Yeah. It can wait PhD and so on. Yeah. It's horrible. I've, got... I've my uh. Grandpa, um, on my dad's side, was in the army, so naturally he was an alcoholic, like all of them. Uh, oh. My aunt's husband, before he passed away, had PTSD because of Nam, and there's a story of how he, he attacked her in the middle of the night because he just thought he was in Nam, and it's like, it, it's, a, it's a sad life, especially, and like with Nam, how uh, the... the Oh, why is my mind blinking at the wrong time? Um, the it starts with a we literally we celebrate a fucking day dedicated to it. Um, veteran, uh, the the veterans that came home after Nam and they just got fucking spit on and treated like shit. It's sad. <laughs> it's really sad. Uh, but Boy, speaking. Not 
Speaking of how war is not great, but also how the band kind of tackles it, 1648, the only song hey, title that I'm, the only song title I'm able to properly pronounce. <laughs> yeah, that was the, that was the song title I put on the in tweet did earlier because for <laughs> some reason a lot of track. But uh, I first note on that one is this is a banger. It really good song and it really showed how war isn't great and the painting the street it at the at the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, because uh, I and it shows the evil deal how they are not pay mercy and how people even get raped and so on. Like yeah. it dark, war it dark. Yeah, like I I I didn't under obviously I couldn't understand what he was saying and I think maybe that was also one where uh. Because that YouTube playlist was really weird. There were a couple of videos that didn't, that weren't in English. Like, it was just the Swedish lyrics. And I think 1648 might have been one of them. So I didn't, I didn't under I had no clue what he was saying. But I did see a comment where someone had said that it was basically like, Sabaton celebrates Sweden and Sweden history, but they also don't glorify it. So here's exactly. an example of them not glorifying it. And they're actually... Exactly. They're they're actually just being like, hey, our country does kind of our country does bad shit as well, and we're going to acknowledge it. <laughs> Which props. <Exactly. laughs> um. Oh, uh, the song actually did have uh, the classic subversion of expectations, where uh, it, at the very end it the it starts to sound like it's going to go into another chorus, and then it just ends. And that was another yeah, moment where I was just like, I was ready for the chorus, and then it ends, and I was like, oh, it's over. Well, that was cool. <laughs> that was a cool way of ending it. Yeah. <laughs> I, really, I really like that song. It, it a great song. Well, I like more on the album. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one's, uh... Yeah, that one also I put a star next to. Probably gonna put... Probably the ones that I did put a star next to, uh... I, I might just... Uh, I'm probably going to throw it into my playlist and have that just play at times. Okay. Uh, anything else that you had to say for 1648? Not really. No? All right. Next song, oh. uh, Caroline's Boon. Bo Boon? Ca Caroline's Boon? Boon. Yeah. Boon. Caroline and Boon. All right. Um... <laughs> yeah, this is one I just wrote. Oh, this organ is interesting. Guitars, lol. <laughs> just, like, every note that I put was just, I like the guitars. The, I, the guitar tones on here do sound really good. Yes. And I did really... He has some of the best guitar that have put all of the digitality, in my opinion. Yeah, and then my last note for that song is, uh, I love the bass on, the, on it, which... Uh, more specifically, the first verse, where you can... It's more prominent. I do really love the sound of the bass on it. it it's got that... If I recall correctly, it's got that, like, kind of muddy mix to it that I, I, I do enjoy. But that's all I can say about the song. What about you? <laughs> like, I, I think did a pretty good song. And, like, it's a song about how... Like, how... Caroline's what like uh, elite in warp and so on, and uh, they eat, they live in up like their bachelorette, and I think the song is doing it pretty well because it had you can feel the mod like religious in the way it present like it almost sound a bit churchy like. That you said, organs in the beginning and so on. And then you have a choir, you no know, dance. That the choir on this song, it actually initiated on the inlet version as well. I found that pretty <laughs> cool. And it doesn't add all that religious, kind of all religious volume. And it fit pretty well in this track. And it had one of my favorite guitar riffs. Kidal cool lol <laughs> in uh, the whole uh, in the whole album. It's pretty good song. It it probably one of my highlights. Yeah. Uh moving on, the title track, Careless Rex. 
which I guess translates to King Charles, I'm just now seeing. Cool. Um, I, that one, I literally just have written, meh, not really feeling it. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, okay, let's start here. Did I quit? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we got somebody <laughs> fucking did a queen. It took three episodes. I can't argue my point here, though, because I don't know what I'm talking about. I can't remember. I can't remember it. I just, know, just have my notes. <laughs> okay. Kalle Sjöndu Hed is one of my favorite songs on the record. And you heard, like, it is about the... It showed the power how the John Schultz, the elf, and how he ruled in absolute monarchy. Like, I think he was like 15 when he got to power with mm. John at the king. And you just see how power only he is with, like, if you get with the line, over Newton, your hat star that translates to over the north, a wool. All and so much it line. Whenever I listen to it, I have listened to it for a long time. And whenever I listen to it, when I was young, I thought a lot of it fun. Oh, this sounds so bad at. And I still <laughs> found it line to sound bad at, even though war is tragic and what he did is probably pretty tragic. And he, can, in the sound, he kind of sound like a madman <laughs> with the lyrics. But one of my favorite line is like. <laughs> Kunan come out for Shukan, they come out the head from good, which translates to the crown didn't come for the church, it came directly from God. I don't know, I found... <laughs> it sounds like a madman, but it sounds kind of bad at the same time. <laughs> and the whole lesson, it built it up, and it just feels so powerful. You you just see the power and the hand, and it. it I don't know, it's such a good t title track and one of my favorite Shabbaton songs. Even my merch have the words of a Newton Hedstar. So, <laughs> yeah, I love that song. <laughs> Songs meh, 7 out of 10. <laughs> hey, you're, you're nicer than someone with not Alex. <laughs> uh, yeah, I literally have nothing that I can say about it because I just wrote. Nah. Um, but the one after that, I did give a star. Um, I don't... I'm going to be honest, I don't even want to try to pronounce that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to... Okay. Um... <laughs> Oh, okay, even with that, yeah, my notes just start becoming nothing. Uh, I have one thing here, it's just, already I like it more than the previous track, and then that's it. Uh, I warned you, my notes are terrible on this one. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I kind of like this on the, the only title on it, if I remember right, a killing count with I found a cooler title, <laughs> but <laughs> it kind of showed the whole song is basically about how uh, the battle of Flood starts. I think I pronounced that right. I'm really bad at name. <laughs> but when the sweet did force it, fate and army, that like they almost tried the side, but the sweet did still won that battle and showed that the world how. Super, super the the armor could could be in battles. It's a pretty good song. I don't have much to say about it though. The bonnet. Yeah. Um. And and just like the the follow up one, uh, Pol Poltava. Oh, Poltava. Yes. Poltava. Uh, I just wrote O, oh, with a question mark, because I think that was. Because the intro, which I can't even remember what the intro was, but I guess it surprised me. And then after that, banger, and then I literally wrote colon relieved colon. Like it's a fucking Discord emote. <laughs> 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 uh, 
And I haven't uh, started, so I guess I liked Poltava. I, I, I'll, I'll have to put it into my, my playlist and listen to it later. It's pretty good. I liked it. It's probably one of my favorites, even though it, it happened a lot against the Watson army. Uh, and it, it kind of does start... Yeah. <laughs> and it kind of does start... It, they kind of the start of the fall of the creativity empire and offer did everything go downhill with you probably heard in the tone and everything on the record and like the next song it named um Conan and Sleep Valley and if I said <clears throat> the inlet title you will probably know what this song is about Lon Live the King Oh, on the pr yeah. on the on Wikipedia, it's uh, translated to the king's funeral. The king's funeral procession is what it's listed as on on Wikipedia. But yeah, long live the king. That wait, that's just a fucking Lion King quote. <laughs> <laughs> but it done in lights. It did death <laughs> of Hasholud Fetch basically <laughs> and his step was I think it was something that they don't know exactly how he died or something I don't remember I'm really bad know. at Swedish history so I know anything I about know Swedish I'm, history so I can't help <laughs> I know I'm, I'm not I'm Swedish but history <laughs> was never my best subject well why are you little little on? because I fucking love the music and the sound <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm American. I don't remember shit from American history. My favorite history moment was Rasputin, who's a Russian. That's it. <laughs> um, Paul did I quit again? Probably one of my favorites. And do we con do we thought we Conan and Clifford? Yeah. Uh, what the fuck? I. What are my notes? Jesus Christ. Um. Okay, I wrote, opening guitar is cool, and then, it's alright, but I kind of lost interest. In my <laughs> opinion, it probably one of the weaker track in the album. Like, I don't think it's bad, but yeah. I don't remember it that well. Even when talking about it, do you know right now, I don't really remember that much of it. Yeah, fair. Yeah, I'm just now kind of realizing that, yeah, this is, a, it is, I believe it's listed on Wikipedia as a, yeah, a concept album based on the rise and fall of the Swedish Empire, and I did not pay attention to the the actual story at all. <laughs> I just, I just kind of, it was just kind of, like, I probably should have given this a second listen before we recorded, but I just gave it the first, like, kind of vibe listen. Like, I, I looked at the lyrics sometimes, and then... Other times I just looked at other things. Plus, I also got in the news that I was hired like midway through uh, working on oh, this album, yeah, so I was just writing that high <laughs> for the rest yeah. of the album. I didn't totally do that. Uh, and then the final track, um, Ruina Imperi? Yeah, I think so. I think it's Latin, so I think it's okay. right, yeah. Uh, I wrote, intro's really fucking good, and then, oh, it's over. So, I mean, that's not a bad he thing, like really, I said. But. He had a great intro, and I kind of liked the almost depressing sound of it and all, but yeah. because it is a sad part, and it like one of the greatest last that Swedes have done, and he uh, really at the fall of the Swedish Empire, like that. They basically what did it about. So, yeah. Do yeah. did the album make you more interested in loving more sweeted history and so on? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like... <laughs> the album's cool. I'll, 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 yeah. I have those four songs that I, uh, I'll give a listen to more often. Mm. Um, but, yeah. I don't really have a score for it. I didn't Fair really enough. think of any 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 uh, 
any like number score for it, and I, I haven't uh, written out the the new scoring system yet. So I don't I don't know where I would lay it. I, I would put this. Um, I won't I won't even give it a score because. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I mean it, it was. A, I'll, I'll give it props. It's an easy listen. I mean, only forty five minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's also forty five minutes. Currently, this episode. Somehow Aim. you you, <laughs> I like how we started being like, oh, we're you know, uh, this is gonna be the shorter section. We've been here for four, almost forty seven minutes. <laughs> uh. But you know, it's also forty minutes long. Nostalgia critics, the wall. Oh my fucking! <sighs> so, I hated little... fucking review. <laughs> a little backstory on my side, at least. I've, I don't think I've ever actually heard the full The Wall album, like in one sitting. Oh. I've heard bits and pieces of it. There are songs off of it that I like. Another Brick in the Wall Part One is my favorite Pink Floyd song of all time. Um, I know the, the, uh, part two is the one that's always, uh, the more popular one. And that is a good song, but I like the more atmospheric sound of part one. Um, uh, feel like part one is setting up part two in a way. And you yeah. feel like the trilogy uh, in that sense. Uh, comfortably numb. I, classic. Hey, you a classic, even though Hey, you wasn't even in the in the movie. Um, and then I've never, I've also never seen the movie, so I watched the movie. I watched the movie two days ago before watching mm -hmm. the Nostalgia Critics review. Mm. That's the backstory of me going into this. Someone the who's we are. basically never just been like a massive fan of the wall I, I don't have an emotional connection to that album or that movie i appreciate it it's a classic for a reason it's iconic i get it i do like it i just don't have a big emotional feeling towards it unlike uh i, I do with 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 this with this movie uh the batman so be showing the batman so i can i can answer the question I, I can answer the question that I asked in the last episode. Is the star is Nostalgia Critics Wall Review worse than Ben Shapiro's? No, absolutely fucking not. I would rather watch Nostalgia Critics The Wall far fucking I would I would sit through that ten minute ten times than have to hear Ben Shapiro speak <laughs> ever fucking again. I have the Ben Shapiro review is fucking burnt into my brain and I hate it. Like even even though I've already made a, a a whole video in response to him, I'm still mentioning him in my review because I'm still finding out things that that prove how fucking dumb he is. Anyways, this isn't about that. This is about. I knew. It. I knew. <laughs> I fucking knew. It. I fucking knew you were mental. It. I fucking knew it. I. Uh, <laughs> this is this is about the, the this is about nostalgia critic, but. This is not the worst thing I've seen. This was such a fucking breeze to get through. <laughs> if anything, it was okay. boring as fuck. <laughs> okay. To my history with Pink Floyd, it, I got into them really late. Like, I think it's the first time I heard a full Pink Floyd album was last year. And last year, I also heard the wall of the first time. I only finished the album here, matched a bit of album. I really liked it. But while I think it really fucking good, it's not something I don't listen to daily or something like that. Yeah. But I think it's a really good album. And I shot the movie for the first time this week together with uh, Sean. I also have like genius at the same time. <laughs> but yet because. <laughs> I wanted to get the meaning of the song as they were portrayed in the movie to understand all the word things that go on that movie. Of the movie itself, like the whole movie, I find it hmm, pretty good. Like yeah. I don't have I don't have a strong feeling about the movie. What I do fucking have strong feeling about <laughs> is the fucking review. <laughs> okay. One of my first notes. One of my first fucking notes. It, I want to cut my ear out of like Van Gogh. <laughs> yeah, 
I never. Peter, I'm, 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 I'm gonna be real with you. I did not have a problem with Doug singing at all. I have. I, I, I did not have a bond. problem with it. In I've the been, slightest. You mean that that <laughs> Eva Willie Bowen, that he, he that he thought he Pontiland was so good, but <laughs> they're so boring. Uh, normally, I actually think Nudolacredit can have his funny moment, but did he like? All the world aspect of hit humor played in yeah. one fucking video. Yeah, uh, and 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 um, could we... I why what? Go ahead. <laughs> why the fuck what Corey Taylor in this review? Why is they just to promote his album or something? Because that's the first thing we see him. Because he does nothing about it. I get he will play the actor in the world, but. They have him. They don't have Holly fucking Taylor in any other song except for fucking SpongeBob in the end for some. Yeah, but that's, that's also just nostalgia critic humor. Like, that's the I joke guess. is having. Cor Ooh, I got Corey Taylor in a review, but he only does SpongeBob. Yeah, that's just <sighs> generic nostalgia critic humor. That's that entire. I, one of my notes is literally just normal NC cringe. Like, I went into this review knowing, like, okay, it's nostalgia critic. I have. If I go into any nostalgia critic video, I, I just expect unfunny, cringe, sometimes a good point, but just. I just expect trash, basically. And that's pretty much what I and, got. And um, hey, it's my main problem. If it would be that for unfunny, boring, and so on, I would be fine with it. I will suffer through it. I will suffer through it, but I will be fine with it. What I'm really not fine with is I found it really fucking insulting because he mocking someone else problem and so on in this review and told her, oh, celebrity and so on with his visual. I got so angry <laughs> that he didn't do any research while watching the movie, yeah, apparently, I mean... because he catched the word that fucking conclusion to win. They are not fucking comparing the, his school life with <laughs> World War II. It's just that those two fucking thing <laughs> it would help build up that fucking wall. Like, I'm showing that you have a fucking great yeah, but... It was, <clears throat> yeah, it, I, I, I had a much easier time with the video when I realized, okay, Nostalgia Critic just took this at fucking face value. He doesn't know the, the actual, like, under meaning uh, it it feels like that review feels like or at times it feels like he didn't even like listen to the album or know the story of the album or the background of the album and just knew it as the fact that the movie does kind of tread on the I'm gonna steal a fucking Mike the Snare joke. The Gorsh, we do be living in a society, though. Like that's kind of, it's kind of what the album and the movie kind of trip upon. Like if you go on Letterbox, all the reviews of the movie are basically just saying it's a we live in a society movie, but it's the only one that's accepted. Um, not as bad reviews. Like it's a very highly praised. Like I, I saw fucking eight out of ten just being like this is the only we live in a society movie that can exist. And I feel like that's probably what Nostalgia Critic just views the movie as, is a we live in a society movie instead of it being based off of Roger study. Waters' life. Yeah. Um, I don't even know where the fuck to begin with this. Um, there is a part where he does... Um, where Where is... Where, where do I have in my notes? Um, yeah... He, there's a part where he's, it's around the, uh, the comfortably dumb song, normal nostalgia critic humor, where they start complaining, or I guess he just starts complaining about the movie being slow, and he has a line in there where he's just, just a, just a half hour more, and I, 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 I hated that moment because I relate so much because I was... <laughs> kind of what I felt when I was watching the the original movie was it does slow down and it I was a little bored and then I was just like how long do I have left of this movie and then there's a half an hour left and it's just like I feel like we're at the end though 
but okay. I have probably did like he, he he felt like he was complaining that the genre was slow. What did that for you complain? Like I you mean, don't like slow jumps? I I, I don't the, get it. The thing is, is like I'm not. Me and Nostalgia Critic aren't the only people, because, like, also Mike the Snare, who probably don't recognize the name, but uh, to probably explain, like, his, the way he thinks, um, he, he actually just, uh, his latest video is about, like, a, a deep dive onto the word mid, so he's, like, a very overthinking person, and he also prefers Kid A over OK Computer, so that's that case. Even him himself has said that The Wall, both the album and the movie, does hit a point where it, the pacing is a little slow and it can be a little boring so even he said it even mike said it so it's not like a out there claim to say um i did also find funny moments like the when he's making fun of the the fascist parts and it <laughs> and it shows all the screens and then you just see welcome to the echo chamber and i was like he's not wrong that is kind of what the original scene was. This uh, kind of was a giant echo chamber. I know this so far sounds like I'm just defending it. I'm not. Yeah. It, it, it's not good. Uh, it, it's not mm. good. It's very boring. It's a dumb review. He doesn't understand anything. I get it. Cool. But at the same time, given how there's the Corey Taylor bit, Given how, when it gets to the fascist part, he's not even talking about the movie anymore. He's just making a fucking bootleg Bart Baker parody, but sounds actually better than Bart Baker, which is surprising. I don't know how you do that. Well, it's easy to do that. Bart Baker's dog shit, but I don't know how Doug Walker ends up making something better than Bart Baker. But anyways, because like during that fascist section, he's not even talking... Because there are parts... In the parody where he is talking about the movie. And then that whole fascist part, he just went on a fucking tirade about Twitter and social media. And I completely lost track of what the fuck he was talking about. That had anything to do with the movie. <laughs> exactly. And so with that, plus at the very end of the review before Corey Taylor sings the Spongebob theme, Corey asks him, you know, what were your thoughts on the movie? And he's like... I'll leave it all, the review's open-ended, just like the movie is, and, and Corey Taylor's like, it's a fucking review, you're supposed to say what it means, and Nostalgia Critic says, I liked it fine, you know, thought it was a little full of itself, but, eh, whatever. So I, I have a feeling, there's a part of me that wonders, was this all one just giant big fucking troll? Where he just, m just made a bunch of fucking bullshit dumb parodies to the wall, and made a dumb fucking video, and called it a day? <laughs> I had a little no, Cause... but oh, one of my auto. <laughs> if you need, if you shot the ad, no, like the break from the movie, I just said, did it shot the love level to Pink Floyd? And I was like, yeah, yeah, you're saying <laughs> it, did, while literally mocking the dude personal problem at he work. No, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I didn't, I the one thing I felt actual. Actually, no, I felt, during the entire time I watched that review, I only felt true anger once, and that was when it went to a fucking Bumble ad, and I hate it, I, be, I, I don't know anyone else who keeps getting these fucking Bumble ads, but I get these mobile Bumble ads that are so fucking annoying, where it's like, it, it, it's like, it'll, it'll show just a guy doing some stupid fucking dance while the text says, like, imagine falling in love with your Bumble date and then you, you get, having a family and getting a home and living a good life together. And, or, and then the one I got was, was a fucking dude on TikTok just being like, no, 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 listen, listen, no, 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 listen, listen, no, 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 And it, like, cuts off, and that's the ad. I, I, I have seen it. I have seen it. I hate it hate these bumble Same. ads that's the thing i hate it that's the thing that gave me anger out of this whole fucking review was the bumble ad that just showed up <laughs> other than that i was just bored did you did probably the first time i had the shown anger it in all of a podcast <laughs> i hated but that and I, I i i didn't understand that whole part of uh like 
Pink Floyd fans dress up as an emo costume? Like, that doesn't sound like the Pink Floyd fan to me. The, the only person that I can think of that would fit that stereotype is... David from Please Stop Talking, who's in like his mid twenties, and he he had, he had said on an episode that back when he was in high school, he went to detention, and he was like a massive Pink Floyd fan, so he was all about the fucking the like he he said that because he was a Pink Floyd fan as a teenager, he was edgy. But that's a guy who's now in his mid twenties, not the kind of kid who would have fucking saw the wall when it first came out. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Really weird. I don't see the emo. Who the fuck Me did neither. Doug Walker meet in high school that was a Pink Floyd I fan, but know. also looked like a fucking MCR fan? Like I honestly don't know. But yet, what really made me angry about the movie? He watched that. I feel like yet he maybe could be a little bit foolish and so on. But it hits music. You can expect it to kind of yeah. be what he is seeing in mind but also i i hate when someone is mocking someone else someone other issues like when the whole is, that's part when he so oh self-pity feel bad on me like well if he's feeling fucking bad wh why are you making fun of <laughs> make the fun of someone mental health that guy yeah. have been a lot grew a lot. He lost his father in on the fucking wall. Like Yeah, uh, the, the the whole point of the wall is just all these things are like like I, I gained I, I, I understood more about the album by watching the movie. Um or at least the story. So it's like during another brick in the wall where they say you're just another brick in the wall, it's you're just another thing that makes that character eventually just basically lock himself and away from the world. That's it's... the point of the movie. But it's obvious Doug just sees it at face value. And so it's hmm. like, okay, cool. I'm not I, even... I, I, I feel like if you were to, if you were to a view or something, at least you need to do a, a little bit of research. Like... Yeah. But it's also Doug Walker. I don't expect it. <laughs> yeah. I know, like, now I completely different for you, but in the Yandel book, when he tips in, who did the adult version of the Yandel book? No, they didn't try it to make uh, the adult version. They were <laughs> just trying to do a fucking live action version, they different than the cartoon. And whatever you think about that movie, that's fine. But don't say they trying to be an adult version when it doesn't. <laughs> there isn't its point. <laughs> the 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 weirdest part of the review is that whole like final ten twenty minutes with the all the really high budget animation that I don't expect in a nostalgia critic video. Because what the fuck? That was the weirdest what? part about the video was. Just the high budget animation. It's like this doesn't this doesn't correlate. You're the guy who uses cheap green screens. What the fuck? <laughs> what am I watching? And I I still don't understand the point that's being made there of just oh it's weird characters so we should have a backstory to each all of them. No. Oh. It's fine just being weird characters that pop up. I watched two flowers. Fuck. What else do you expect from this? <laughs> <laughs> and also, the different characters that show up, the character is his mental picture of person in his life. Like yeah. one of the characters is the judge. Like, probably, it's, I'm I'm judge speculating, but probably the judge inside him uh, that is judge in every mood. Then his mom is one creditor, and then his the ex wife is one of the. Yeah, Tisha is one of the. Yeah. So there is a background to those characters, but oh. yeah, why oh <laughs> Okay, so uh, looking at my notes, um, I quoted one of those, one of the creatures, that female creature. I don't. I don't know what the fuck any of that was. Um, where she says, like, isn't that the point of a movie is to make a point? And I wrote, no, not really. And then 
I wrote something. I I still agree. I kind of do agree with this. Um, the nostal nostalgia critics review of the wall is the result of what that Adam tweet was <laughs> of how you should you should hold every movie to the same standard. Yeah, and when you do that, you get how the fuck nostalgia critic views yeah. the wall. <laughs> Is yeah? Is he's it, it, like, it literally is just him being like, it doesn't serve as big as a point as like the Godfather, and it's like, it doesn't fucking need to. <laughs> it's not even your wicker or the movie. It but like I feel like this movie just an it's addition a drama. Uh, to it's the a album. musical. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he more like oh did it add either add on to the album, basically. <laughs> yeah. It's basically just visuals to a fucking album. That's it. It yeah. just tells yeah. the same story as the album. And the album tells the story of Roger Waters when he... Because that album was inspired from when Roger Waters, uh, or when Pink Floyd um, did like a, a like a stadium performance, and Roger Waters got really pissed off because he didn't like the crowd uh, making a bunch of noise. And he was like, I'm just trying to make music. I'm just trying to play my music here. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and it's like, and so he just started yeah. envisioning hit like a wall between him or the, the stage and the crowd and which then inspired the wall, which was also inspired by a lot of the shit that he went through. But the social critic obviously doesn't get that. And then yeah. there's the part of me that also wonders, is this just one big fucking troll that he, he does like the movie? And he just thought people want me to review this. I'm just gonna make a dumb fucking parody. Because how else would you explain why the fuck the fascist parody has nothing to do with the original, with the movie? You just kind of like went off to what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> yeah. The only thing I can yeah, think I, of is just, was this a troll? Did we all fall for this? <laughs> it will be the great that troll like, on the internet. Did we all fall for a fucking troll? Like, I swear to God. And then I also love... <laughs> I uh, love, uh, there's, there's some parts in the beginning that you can interpret it as Doug Walker also making fun of Slipknot, which I enjoy a lot because I don't like, <laughs> <laughs> not that I don't like Slipknot, I don't like Corey Taylor. Slipknot musically is, is all right, but it, it still, it's just, I find it funny. Uh, mm. it... <laughs> like I said, I did get my funny moments, like when they're making fun of the, the, the classroom scene and all the people are laughing and then Rob Scallon just, you hear in the background just him going, do you people laugh at everything? <laughs> just, <laughs> that was funny. Um, or or at, at the beginning where he goes, uh, been a long time since you've seen the wall and I'm like, joke's on you, I watched this two days ago. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, it wasn't, it, it's pretty much what I expected, was just dog shit. <laughs> yeah. No, I wasn't expecting that animation stuff at the end, I still don't know what that was, what any of that was, and it's still really weird seeing high quality shit in a Nostalgia Critic video, that's not, it's not what I'm used to at all. <laughs> But, but then you'd say that send you to a review on your channel. Hey, you see everything you should do. <laughs> when... Oh yeah, he also plays. Uh, I also wrote because he he there's a part where uh oh what is it? I think it's when he's um when the guy when when Corey's like skipping through all the sad parts and one of the parts that he skips, nostalgia critic starts singing Hey You and I just wrote Hey You wasn't even in the fucking movie. <laughs> It's like one of the songs that didn't make it into the movie. What are you doing? I I know that that movie is like hinting a bit from the track list. Maybe in twenty. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, I also was not expecting to see the the Doug Walker GIF at full speed at, in this video because it cuts to his, his ad for I think Honey and it's the the Doug Walker on the keyboard GIF. And it's like, I oh, was not expecting fun. that to be in this. <laughs> that makes sense. And this video got so viral <laughs> yeah. and everybody was like talking about it when they came. That, and it's at that, full... that kind of made sense. And it's at full speed as well. Like I was expecting like the GIF was sped up 
for the for the meme, but no, the actual video has it being sped up, and I was like, I wasn't expecting this. Okay, interesting. <laughs> um, it is so good meme that that the best thing that I come up on. This the best thing to come review. out of this review. <laughs> it's the Doug Walker gif. <laughs> yeah. Um, another part that I thought was funny was the sun bit. Where they're all like, let's go out and rampage, and then they go out into the sun, and then they're like, ah, the sun too bright, and they go back inside, and I was like, that's kind of funny. But other than that, it, it's just regular trash. I, I, yeah. I, I didn't get mad. I, I was just really bored. <laughs> and then at the very end, I was like, Fair enough. and and it could just be because I, I also, you know, obviously, I got high. And then there's also another part that I thought was really funny where he says, uh, smoke a bong and it'll feel less wrong. And I said, I fucking bet. And I just grabbed my bong and took a hit. <laughs> but it's just that end. That by the end of it, I was, just, I, I'm still just questioning, like, is this just a fucking troll? Was uh, It sounds like a cop out to defend it. It's just, like, oh, you don't get it. It was, it, it was supposed to be stupid, but it's like. I can't, I don't know how was else it? to explain it. <laughs> was I it? don't. What Rob Scallon Maybe definitely showed up point. just for the fucking paycheck, and I don't blame him. There are shit. There are parts. Yeah. There are parts in those songs where shit is so obviously off time, and it's not fixed. And I just thought, I don't blame Rob for putting zero effort into this. Yeah. <sighs> So that's, that's I all mean, I can. Well, not. That's all I can say about Nostalgia Critics: The Wall. It's uh, uh, something. He did with you. He all the. He wanted to read you of all the times. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the recommended section, which I, I have been. Cool. Um. So, I'm gonna recommend. Uh, I guess I should probably also lay down the ground rules of what we're going to do for TV shows. Because uh, yeah, this was a little definitely. little bit of a, a last-minute addition, like after we had already recorded the first episode. Um, when it comes to TV shows, um, we basically just... We're going to watch just the first three episodes. Um, and I guess if you want to continue watching the show, you can. I might. It just depends. Um, so... I'm going to I'm going to recommend I what I used to say was my favorite anime of all time. I say used to because I haven't seen it in a while. I'm a different person than I was when I first watched it. I, I care a lot less about the shit that I cared about back then. So I don't know how I how I'm going to feel about this. But at the same time, I've also been watching Seba, uh What is it? Uh, uh, fuck. Uh, Sa Sabagebu. It probably butchered that fucking name, and that one's been a lot more entertaining, and 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 that one's probably looking to be like my favorite of all time. Um, but I, I I'll, I'm gonna recommend uh Hajime te no Gal or the English translation uh My First Girlfriend is a Gal, an anime that I watched back in 2020. No, that doesn't sound right. 2019, I think probably. Um. And then I, I fell in love with because it's very, it's very comedy, and the main character is a virgin that gets blue balled, and I could relate back then. So that's going to be what I, I recommend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will recommend one of my favorite anime shows that they, they eat like a woman, a woman comedy, with it Toa Toa. Yeah. And Toa Toa. It, it, I already seen it this year. He's seen and this that three like times, my by the way. Yes. Yeah, I seen it three times. And trying to do it deeper, but I need to watch it a uh, fourth time now. <laughs> didn't you just watch And I love this show. Didn't you first watch yes. Toradora like last year? Or was that 2020? I think the first time was 2020. Then I watched it one more time in 2021. Uh, one more time this year. <laughs> and apparently this year we watched it two times. But I don't care. I love that show. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I'm down for that. 
and also the fact that you and I have been basically trading the way we feel about things. <laughs> this might be interesting. <laughs> I'm, I may come back and be like, I don't really like Hajime Tenogal all that much anymore, and you'll come back being like, I relate to this. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. But uh, that, that's, that's, uh, that's going to be the episode. We need to abruptly end this. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's, that's how we are too. In the that's, how, that, that's how it ends. I don't. I guess I'll just abruptly end it in post.